وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين إن شاء الله today we'll have a hadith number 18 عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله عز وجل يقول يوم القيامة يا ابن آدم مرضت فلم تعدني قال يا رب كيف أعودك وأنت رب العالمين قال أنا علمت أن عبدي فلانا مرض فلم تعده ألا أما علمت أنك لو عده لوجدتني لو عنده so I will translate this part and then we will go to the next part, inshallah. So Abu Hurairah reported that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, on the day of resurrection, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, son of Adam, I was sick and you did not visit me. So he would reply, my Lord, how could I visit you when you are the Lord of the universe? Allah would say, did you not know that my servant so-and-so was ill and yet you did not visit him? Did you not know that if you had visited him, you would have found me, find, found me with him? Then hadith goes on. يا ابن آدم استطعمتك فلم تطعمني قال يا رب كيف أطعمك وأنت رب العالمين قال أما علمت أنه استطعمك عبدي فلان فلم تطعمه أما علمت أنك لو أطعمته لوجدت ذلك عندي Son of Adam I asked you for food but you gave me none and he would reply my Lord, how could I feed you when you are the Lord of the universe? Allah will say, did you not know that my servant so-and-so asked you for food and yet you gave him none? Didn't you know that if you had fed him, you would have found that with me? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on. Ya ibn Adam, istasqaytuka falam tasqini. Qala ya rabbi kayfa asqika wa anta rabbul alameen. Qal, istasqaka abdi fulanun falam tasqih. Ama innaka law saqaytah, lawajadta thalika indi. Son of Adam, I asked you for a drink but you gave me none. He will reply, my Lord, how could I give you a drink when you are the Lord of the universe? He will say, my servant so-and-so asked you for a drink, but you gave him none. Did you not know that if you had given him something to drink, you would have found that with me? An amazing hadith. So the first part talks about someone being sick and was not visited. Health is one of the best blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us. While sickness, while someone is sick, The, that, that would be very hard. Sickness deprives someone from enjoying lots of the blessings of Allah. An example, if someone has a stomach ache, he will not be able to enjoy food. He will not be able to enjoy drinks. He will not even be able to enjoy sleeping. 
And that's, that's why if you ask uh, most of the elders, how are you? The answer will be, Alhamdulillah, we are healthy. Most of the people will have the same answer. Alhamdulillah, we are healthy. To them, it's very important to be healthy. When people are sick, they would be in bed, suffering the pain. And they would not be able to work, to walk normally, to eat normally, or to live normally. At the time of sickness, a true believer, you know, what, what will happen to him? He would feel the companionship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will make lots of dua. He will ask Allah to give him speedy and complete shifa. So he, he will keep saying, Ya Allah, oh Allah, oh God, Ya Allah, give me the health, Ya Allah. But some people who have a higher maqam, they would not ask Allah for shifa. Why? Uh, Prophet Ayyub, عن, when he was sick, very sick, and he, he, the, he was asked to make dua that Allah would heal him, would give him shifa, he said, I will feel ashamed. I've been living all my life very healthy, and now for, for, uh, for this uh, disease that I'm having, even if it is a dangerous disease, for that, I will ask Allah for Shifa. I will feel so ashamed of him. So, not everyone will ask Allah for Shifa. But those are the people of very high maqams. Those are MBAs. Those are the friends of Allah. Actually, I myself have heard it from one of those uh, people. He was very sick. He had cancer. And he had a surgery. And he was in pain. And the only words that you would hear from him Ya Rabbi, in lam yakum bika ghadabun alayya fala ubali. Oh Allah, if you are satisfied with me, if you are happy with me, I don't care about all the pain that I am suffering from now, that all the pain that I am in now. Nothing. He just wanted to, to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with him. Whereas the people of ignorance would not be happy about being in this state at all, about being sick, about being uh, 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 not healthy. They would feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had de de deprived them of health. He had deprived them of uh, this valuable blessing and he gave it to others. So they would feel envious. Why I am not healthy and that person is healthy? Why? They will keep asking why. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does everything he wills and no one can question him. But those are the people of ignorance. So this hadith is a direct channel to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a direct route, actually, to, to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we hear of someone who is sick or someone who is in need, the impulse that we feel to help should be so strong that it is impossible to ignore. We have to help. We have to respond. This is a chance for us to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, in visiting and comforting the sick, uh, in defeating people, poor people, and in relieving the thirst, and, the, and in relieving the suffering of others, all these actions 
with all these actions lie an amazing feeling of happiness. You know why? Because the heart feels the incredible closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that by itself gives happiness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said it himself. You come visit the sick, you will find me there. And when you are, when you know that you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you feel that you are in a different world. So maybe, or actually we have to, to uh, rethink about priorities so that we jump at the chance to be there in the places and the opportunities where the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be found. Maybe we can, we can foster a high level of alertness so that we are always on the lookout for ways to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through comforting the suffering of people in our communities, in our neighborhoods, uh, around us, in our families, close family, far family. So we have to take advantage of all chances, of all opportunities. And always remember, if people come to you for help, then you are lucky because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened a special channel for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened a special channel for you alone. So be grateful. Be grateful. And do not lose this chance. Do not lose it. You need all chances to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you, when you have this chance, be grateful. Take advantage of this chance. Give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And make your intention just for him alone and not for anything else. Do not give so that you will be known as a generous person. Do not give so that you will be known as a giver. Why? Because if this is your intention, then you got your reward in this dunya and you are labeled the label that you want people to know you with. No. We give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, he gave us the advice. And he said, Actions are by their intentions. Deeds are by, they, by their intentions. فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Or as he said, whoever Whoever ha is migrating for the sake of Allah, then his migration is for the sake of Allah, and he will be rewarded by Allah. وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِدُنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِحُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَجْرَ إِلَيْهِ And whoever has another intention, then that will be whatever his reward is. He will lose the reward in the day after. So always have the correct intention. And the correct intention is always for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not do anything in this dunya for anyone with the intention or with the expectation of having something back in return. Do your deeds all for the sake of Allah. If people see what you are doing, then okay. If people did not see what you are doing, then Allah sees everything. Allah has a record for everything. And he will reward you. Do not expect your reward from people. No. 
You want your re reward to be from the creator of those people. So always have the correct intention. Always do that, any action for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this hadith, <clears throat> we can observe three main themes, which if we put them together, will, will give us a roadmap for the proper way of life. A proper way of life that a believer should stick to. So when you visit to the sick, when you help the needy, when you feed the poor, when you do this, when you, when you give zakah, when you give sadaqah, so this is a roadmap how our society will be. It will be an amazing society. A, a society that will have each and every person looks and helps the other person. If we look deeply into this hadith, we find it's talking about ways to help people in hardship. So our life is not a place of resting. It is a place where we will face so many tests in life. How come? If this life is filled with happiness, joy, no worries, everything is as we wish and uh, even better, so we will not look forward to paradise. Everything is good here. Why, why would we, we would care about the life after? No. This dunya is a place where we have one test after the other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us so that we know him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us so that he would test us. He would see how we do during the times of tests, during the times of calamities. How are we supposed to react in case of tests and calamities? Abu Umam radiallahu anhu said that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يقول الله تعالى ابن آدم إن صبرت واحتسبت عند الصدمة الأولى لم أرض لك ثوابا دون الجنة. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, son of Adam, if you show endurance, if you show patience, if you practice patience, and seek your reward from me in the first few minutes of the affliction that happens, when it happens, then I shall be pleased with no lesser reward than paradise for you. SubhanAllah. It's a promise made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have so many stories that show how the friends of Allah practice patience. Once there was a righteous per person, uh, he had a problem in his leg. And the doctors uh, decided to cut it off. So the leg will be amputated. So when they cut it off for him, he said, Show it to me before you bury it in the dirt. Show it to me. He took it in his hands and he said, Alhamdulillah. I only walked to places that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be happy to see me there. I never walked to any places that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would hate to see me there. Alhamdulillah, he took one part of my body, but I still have a lot of healthy ones. Alhamdulillah, he has taken one part 
and left me all the others. So imagine someone who has just got his leg amputated and he is thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how we should be. Another story. Once, again, a righteous person. He had a, a very big car accident, a huge car accident. And when they took him out of the car, uh, his hand was broken. He was taken to the hospital. He was checked out. It's only his hand that was broken. And the minute he knew that, he said, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. With this terrible accident, it could have been much worse. I can still walk. I can see. I can, I can uh, go here and there. No, my head is not injured. Um, uh, everything is, is safe. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, so these stories, such stories are countless. All of us teach us one lesson. Practice patience. Always thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything, whether good or bad. Good or bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 35 said, وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةً وَإِلَيْنَا تُرْجَعُونَ And we test you with evil and with good as a trial. And to us, you will be returned. And in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 156, he says, أَلَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ those who, when a disaster strikes them, they would say, indeed, we belong to Allah. And indeed, to him we will return. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We belong to Allah and we are returning to him. So all tests that we pass through in this life and they are countless. We will be rewarded for in the life after if we practice patience. Once at the time of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a woman uh, lost her child. Her child passed away. And she was so sad. She was at his grave crying crying and crying. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu was passing by and he saw her. So he talked to her and he, taught, he, he asked her to practice patience. So she said, Leave me alone. You don't have the same disaster, the same affliction that I have. She did not know that he was Sayyidina Muhammad And she kept crying and crying. Later on, someone told her, how would you do that? That was Sayyidina Muhammad who was talking to you. How did you do it? And she rushed to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She apologized and she said, Ya Rasulullah, I did not know that it was you who was, who was talking to me. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Innama sabru inda sadbati al-ula. You have to practice patience when the calamity happens. Not later. And during that time, you will, you, you will be in a bad shape. No, you cannot. Sometimes people, when they face a big test, they lose it. They do not know what they are saying. They do not know what they are doing. If someone is told that, hey, your son passed away, he would be very 
but they were very sad. He would be crying aloud. He would say words. Why? Well, I don't believe it. Bring him back. Uh, what do you mean I don't believe it? Each and every person on this dunya comes and goes. Whatever has a beginning will have an end. You have to accept it. What do you mean I don't accept it? What do you mean I don't believe it? This is Allah's decree. And we have to accept everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees on us. So at the time, at the time of the calamity, we should, we should be happy at the time of the calamity. At the time of the calamity, we should be strong. Some people would say, we could not do it. How at this hard time, we should be patient? How can we practice patience? And the answer is, be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the time of ease so that he will be with you during the time of hardship. Be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you have, when you are at ease, always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not only at the time of hardship you say, Ya Allah, oh Allah, oh my God, I need your help. No. At the time of ease. And when you practice patience, you always remember, Inna ma'al usri yusra. Inna ma'al usri yusra. With each hardship, there is ease. With each hardship, there is ease. So how, how, how can we practice that? So be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of ease. He will be with you during the time of hardship. Be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fulfill your duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the, the, the ease time. Allah will make your hardship easy. Perform your prayers. And I say perform. It's not pray. Let it not be just movements up and down, up and down, and we don't know what we are saying. No. Perform your prayer with khushu'ah, with uh, uh, an alert heart. Perform your prayer as if it is your last prayer, as if you are dying after the prayer. You will perform it. You will perfect it. So perform your prayers. Pay your sadaqah. Pay your zakah. Help others who are in need. This is a treasure. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep it, will save it for you till the day of judgment. Read Quran. Try to understand it. Apply its orders. Refrain from all preventions. Send salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Keeping in mind that there is a high reward for all that you are doing. So performing, performing these actions and a lot more. A lot more. Have, a, have good manners. Treat people well. So all of this will enlighten your path. The reward for this will be in dunya before you have it in akhirah. So you will have both rewards in dunya and akhirah. And the reward in dunya is that it will be an ease at the time of hardship. It will make your hardship easier. I'm not saying you will not feel the hardship. No, we are human beings. But it will make it easier for you. I remember always the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
والله يحب الصابرين and Allah loves the steadfast Allah loves those who practice patience and never be like those mentioned in another in another verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-zumar and zumar ayah 49 he says فَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ ضُرٌ دَعَانَا ثُمَّ إِذَا خَوَّلْنَاهُ نِعْمَةً مِنَّا قَالَ إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ بَلْ هِيَ فِتْنَةٌ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُهُمْ And when, when adversity touches man, he calls upon us. Then, when we bestow on him for a favor from us, he says, I have only been given this because of my knowledge, because of who I am, because of this, because of that. He will not say, because it's a bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, it is a trial, but most of them do not know. Ummu Salama, radiallahu anha, Ummu al-Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers, قالت سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ما من عبد تصيبه مصيبة فيقول إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون اللهم أجرني في مصيبته واخلف لي خيرا منها إلا آجره الله تعالى في مصيبته وأخلف له خيرا منها قالت فلما توفي أبو سلمة قلت كما أمرني رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فأخلف الله خيرا منه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم So Musalama, the mother of the believers, reported that I heard the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying when a person suffers from a calamity and says إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون We belong to Allah and we are going back to Allah. Allahumma ajurani fi musibati. Oh Allah, compensate me in my affliction. Wakhlufni khayran minha. Wakhlufli khayran minha. And recompense my loss and give me something better in exchange for it. So again, the dua is Allahumma ajurani. Oh, the first إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون اللهم أجرني في مصيبتي واخلف لي خيرا منها So what will happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely compensated this person with reward and with better substitute. And Amma Salama remembered that when her husband passed away and she said that to her. And she said, when Abu Salama who is her husband, died, I repeated the same supplication. Allah, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allahumma ajurni fi musibati wa akhluf li khayran minha. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon me a better substitute than him. And I was married to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah. So we have to have great belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has promised for the reward. Allah has promised for a big reward. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يقول الله تعالى ما لعبد المؤمن عندي جزاء إذا قبضت صفيه من أهل الدنيا ثم احتسبه إلا الجنة. So Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه may Allah be pleased with him reported that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said Allah سبحانه وتعالى says I have no reward other than جنة for for a believing slave a believing slave of mine who remains patient for my sake when I take away his beloved one 
when I take his son, when I take his daughter, when I take his father, his mother, anything, anyone whom he loves, I take. And he practiced patience from among all those people of the world, then I, I guarantee paradise for him. So if we go, uh, uh, if we summarize the whole thing, we go back to the very beginning and we find that it's a duty for a Muslim that when his Muslim brother is sick, he should visit him because Allah is there. And when you visit anyone who is sick, make lots of dua for yourself, for the ummah for your parents, for your children. Make, make dua. Allah is there and he will answer your dua. And it's a duty of a Muslim that when his Muslim brother is in need, he should help him. And the best way to help is to do it before you are being asked to help. Don't wait for people to ask you if you know that they need help. Just do it, do it. And it's a duty of a Muslim that when he passes a hardship, that he practices patience. And we have always to keep remembering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a promise. And that was uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 156 and 157, he says, Those who are sick and they say, And those, when disaster strikes them, they say, Indeed, we belong to Allah, and indeed, to Him we will return. So what's the reward? Those are the ones upon whom are blessings from their Lord and mercy. And it is those who are the rightly guided. So Allah will have his blessings on them. Allah will have his mercy on them. And they will be guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this guidance, this mercy, this blessings, all of these will help them during the time of calamities. It will help them to practice patience. It will help them to be good. It will help them to to accept the uh, decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with this, we come to the end of our hadith today, to our session today. And until we meet again next week, inshallah, I would leave you uh, by sending your salam and my salam and my best salawat and yours to our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rabbana, laka alhamdu kama yanbaghi li jalali wa shihika wa azimi sultanik. Ya Rabbana, laka alhamdu wa shukru wa ni'mata wa rida. Alfu alfi salatim ma' alfi alfi salamin alayka ya Rasulullah. Alfu alfi salatim ma' alfi alfi salamin alayka ya Habiballah. Alfu alfi salatim ma' alfi alfi salamin alayka ya Amina wa Hila. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.